Hello once again, I'm Extra Life. Welcome back to the bench. Today I'm starting the process of reconfiguring and consolidating my synth gear so that I have less outboard stuff to carry around and more stuff that fits directly into my new Eurorack case. And we're going to start with the sidechain compression hardware. And up to now I have been using this, which is a great compressor. It's an FMR, really nice compressor. Uh, it punches way above its weight in terms of price and performance. Uh, and I've been pretty happy with it so far, other than the fact that uh, you have to connect to it by these quarter inch jacks on the back. It needs a separate power supply, uh, and the form factor is unlike anything else that I have, so it needs its own space in the pedal board. Um, so we're going to try and replace it with something much more compact. And the module that I've selected to do this is the Mutable Instruments Shades, which is a triple attenuverter and offset generator. This obviously is a DIY version sold by Modular Addict, and it's based on the original designs by Emily Gillet. It may not be immediately obvious how a triple attenuverter can be used as a compressor, but we're going to use it in combination with a VCA and an envelope generator that I've already got in my Eurorack, and that combination of hardware effectively gives us exactly the same kind of signal processing that is in any VCA-based compressor like this FMR. So let's take a closer look and see what's involved with building this Mutable Instruments Shades. So here we've got the PCBs in the front panel for the project, and as you can see, this uh, PCB does not have any component values or part numbers on it, which makes it a little bit difficult to assemble. So I have got the schematic for the module right here, which is a large version of the PCB, which has the uh, values and part numbers. We start with all of the little 0603 resistors and capacitors. And so let's start with those and uh, see how far we can get with this project. So next I think we're going to put in the ICs. We've got a bunch of op amps as well as some diodes. And for these SOIC packages, I think we're going to try and use this hoof tip. I finished up all of the surface mount parts here, and I think this is going to work okay. It's not the best soldering I've ever done. This IC is a little bit misaligned, but I checked it with the uh, little jeweler's loop here, and everything looks to be attached. Uh, I would say stay away from this particular version because uh, the silk screen, of course, is uh, inadequate. It doesn't have the, the component values. Uh, where it does exist, it's very hard to read the part numbers, and there are not orientation markings. What it, Basically, what I was doing was... Uh, reading from the schematic and trying to see, well, which part does pin one of this op amp connect to, and then orient pin one so that it's nearest that part, which is not uh, the best or most reliable method, and it also makes the whole thing take a lot longer. There are actually a lot of companies that have taken the Mutable Instruments designs that are no longer in production because they're open source uh, and produce their own PCBs to sell them as DIY kits, but this really is like the lowest effort possible version of that because it's using uh, the original PCB layout without any alterations, uh, and then leaving the original 
uh, footprints and silkscreen, which make it very difficult for the home user. And to sell it as like a DIY kit is, I think, uh, a little bit deceptive because this is just a, a board that's designed for pick-and-place assembly and reflow soldering. So if you don't have those tools and you're doing it by hand, uh, I would say stay away from this particular type of design. Look for something that's been uh, touched up a bit for the DIY version. Anyway, with all that kvetching aside, we're going to move on to the through-hole parts, and we're going to start with the ones on the back because those need to be soldered up here on the front, so the power connector, and then these jumpers here which let you select the different modes that each attenuator works in. Alright, that just about wraps up this build. The last three components we have to put on are three of these bicolor LEDs which fit down here uh, in between the jacks and they indicate uh, whether the output is positive or negative. But because it's a bicolor LED, uh, that doesn't tell us which color the anode is. So basically, uh, if we put it in one way, we're going to get uh, green as positive, red as negative. If we put it in the other way, we're going to get the opposite. So I don't know which is which. We're just going to put them all in the same way and then figure that out after we turn it on. We've got the Mutable Instruments module tester, which is really nice because it gives you uh, an isolated power supply to test stuff with, so you don't have to uh, plug it into your case with all of your other modules. Uh, and it has some uh, CV generation and analysis so that we can do a little bit more detailed testing. Overall, I'm not sure if this is behaving correctly. I'm going to have to read the manual a little bit more closely uh, and then inspect the board and see if everything is oriented the right way. I am feeling a little bit of heat being generated right here on the board, which I guess is near where the uh, voltage reference is. These op amps are fairly cool to the touch, but this one appears to be generating more heat. I think I'm going to plug it into the oscilloscope and try and get a better look at what's going on. All right, so I've been probing around this with the uh, oscilloscope, the multimeter, and the module tester for a little while. I have noticed that it does output the correct voltages if this jumper is removed. So I'm going to get this under some bright light and look very closely at all of these joints and probably do some reflow work with the hot air and some solder paste. I've worked on this module a little bit more and I've been able to get two out of three of these attenuators working. The top two are working just fine right now. However, the third one is a little bit stubborn and I can't seem to find the issue. I am reasonably certain that it is the op amp on this third channel that is blown or at least uh, in some way malfunctioning. I probably damaged it at some point during my testing. Uh, so I have had to wait for some parts to turn up so that I can replace this op amp and see if that theory is indeed correct. Animals can make all kinds of sounds. People make all kinds of sounds. Things can make sound, but what makes the thing make the sound? It's...
Look at that. Absolutely brilliant. I've got the shades module all set up, installed in the rack. So now we're gonna try and set up some, uh, essentially side chain compression with it. So you can see we've got these uh, three knobs here. We can adjust the output and we see that we get the corresponding brightness on this LED to there. And if we put it in bipolar mode, we have red for negative, right? And so we can set it neutral at 12 o'clock. So in this way, we can use it as an attenuator or in the bipolar mode as an attenuverter or just to generate an offset voltage, which corresponds to this knob position. Next to the shades module, I've got a couple of others. Right here, we have a triple VCA. This is by RYO and an envelope follower, which takes an audio signal in and then generates an envelope that follows the shape of that audio signal. So what we're going to do is take the output from our synth and I'm going to send that into the input of the VCA. And then I'm going to take my uh, synthesizer envelope, which is over here, and just plug that into the control voltage input. Now, the way that these envelopes are normaled is that the output of one feeds into the audio input of the next. So by chaining two of them in a row, we get essentially a linear or an exponential curve on this envelope. And this is exactly the same as the way that the shades module is wired. The output of one is daisy chained into the input of the next. So if we have this in unipolar mode, we can turn the knob, and you can see that this... Uh, 0 to 5 volts gets just fed into each successive envelope and if we like we can invert it at a certain point and then that gets daisy chained into the next output and you can see the audio output of that signal on the top of the oscilloscope here now if we want to use another signal to process that what we do is we send that into the input of the envelope follower so I'll take the output of my kick drum and plug that into the asymmetrical input of the envelope generator. And I'm gonna take the envelope out and then plug that into my oscilloscope. So if we turn down the oscillator, we can see what that looks like here. You can see we just get a rising voltage which then falls slowly or quickly depending on how long this kick drum is. So now we're generating an envelope, which is the essentially positive version of this kick drum. And what we want to do is process it using shades so that we can get a negative version of it. So I'm going to plug the output, the envelope out from this envelope follower into the first input of the shades module. So now we put it at bipolar mode. We're at 12 o'clock here. You can see it's doing almost nothing on the oscilloscope. And if we invert it, you can see it starts to go negative and we have to bring this up so that we can see it. And then using this control, we can adjust essentially the amplitude of that signal into the negative direction. However, it's important to remember that at the top here, it's still at zero volts. So the voltage excursion of this is into the negative, which means if we plug it into a VCA, there's no positive portion of that waveform. It's all gonna be muted. So what we need to do is take advantage of the serial nature of this shades module and add an offset voltage to this. So instead of using the top attenuverter as our input, we'll use the second one. And we'll use this one in unipolar mode and we'll generate an offset voltage here. So we'll add some positive voltage component to the input, which will then get mixed together with our kick drum envelope follower. And so now if we send that, we can just control the offset of this top envelope so that we don't start at zero volts, we start at something like say five volts, and then when we apply this kick signal, it goes down towards zero volts. With that, now we've generated an envelope follower signal, which is both offset and inverted, and so we can use this to adjust the volume of our synthesizer signal to create a ducking effect. So if I patch that output into the VCA, that will turn down the volume of the bass line when the kick drum is playing. So now you can see that this light here in the middle 
is actually pulsing from positive to zero whenever that kick drum hits. And then the fun part of this is we can actually turn down that kick drum and still hear that ducking effect. Well, there you go. That is how you use a triple attenuverter in combination with some other modules, of course, like a spare VCA and an envelope generator or follower of some kind to create a sidechain dynamics processor. I think it sounds really good. And in fact, this precise setup is how many commercial compressors work. They use a VCA in combination with some kind of envelope follower. There are other methods of uh, doing dynamics control, but this is the most common. And in your rack, of course, it's very straightforward to set up. Having built this module DIY, I have to say I do recommend that you just go out and buy this one. Uh, doing the surface mount parts underneath stuff like potentiometers and jacks makes it really difficult for the home gamer to do debugging, and you really are going to end up needing something like hot air and some microscopes. Uh, it's just a bit too much of a hassle, especially with this board where there's very little in the way of silkscreen to guide you. Uh, but the module itself... I can't recommend highly enough. It works great. It's very intuitive, super compact, and it's like a Swiss army knife. It does so much for the footprint that it takes up. It's always fun to get a chance to get the oscilloscope out and show you how these signals are actually working, so I might leave this here for a while just to play with it. But I hope you found that interesting and maybe enjoyable. As always, I want to take this time to say a huge shout out and thanks to my supporters over on Patreon. It really means the world to me to have your support, and it means that I'm able to take the time to make and edit these videos, so thank you very much. And if you're interested in getting early access to all of my new videos, as well as a little bit of bonus content, head on over to patreon.com slash extra life and become a supporter today. Well, I think that about does it. I was really getting into the groove, so I think I'm going to keep jamming for a little while longer, and I hope you do the same. As always, practice and enjoy. I'll see you next time.